I have this process in my mind where I look at things and I think that just doesn't seem right to me. And for years I felt that way about uh, battery operated tools. Um, in fact, because they had batteries, I, I considered them probably more toys than tools. I know that has changed dramatically. But years ago I needed to do some fence work around here and I wasn't going to drag around a generator and a corded drill. So I purchased this. It was very inexpensive. came with two batteries. And just as I suspected, a couple of years after I had it, the batteries kind of went defunct. Strangely, 30 years ago, I bought this Ryobi. Just in a pinch, I really wanted a Milwaukee. And I thought, well, I'll buy this until I've got the money to do that. And I had no idea this thing was going to last this long. It's been extremely impressive. This thought process, um, I, I think it started early on in my life. Um, as I kind of think about when it all kind of kick started, I, I think it probably was when I was seven years old, my grandfather passed away. And I began to look at life very different than I had up until that point. And um, those were back in the days when parents, grandparents didn't talk to kids about death. Um, they would say during that time period, you guys need to go in the other room. And they would talk about the things that uh, pertain to the funeral, um, life, all that kind of stuff. And so I would set and I would think about these things a lot. And so I began to think, well, you know, what happened to him? Because they, they said at the funeral and they said other times, well, you know, he went to heaven. And so this is like everlasting life. So um, is it like this or like this? And so I began to just really process this in my mind. And just as a little kid, I... I didn't watch a lot of TV and so I spent a lot of time looking through books and kind of contemplating, thinking on life. And later on in high school and college, we took some philosophy classes and interesting is listening to the philosophers, you know, I didn't really agree with them. And I, I just had these thoughts in my head that, you know, things aren't quite right and this should be better. I wasn't jaded at that point like I felt like some of the philosophers were and so I asked the question where did I get this thought process that things aren't quite right well in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 11 it talks about how he's put eternity in our hearts and so I, at that point, when I understood that, become convinced that the reason I look around and I see that things aren't right is because I came programmed this way. Then when I look at the garden and how God put Adam and Eve in the garden and he designed them for that and that we're not in the garden now, that we see that things are not right. Then looking at Romans 1, I began to realize that uh, he, he, he's put the law in our hearts. So even at a, as a lost person when I was young, I knew that things were not right. And so I began to pursue this. And what I found was, I found that the word of God was true and it was right. And a lot of this journey was because secular humanism was thrust on me and man was giving an answer for why he was here and I wasn't, I wasn't satisfied with it. And I knew there had to be a creator. And so, the age of 21, I realized that not only were things not right in the world, but things were not right within me. And it was that night that I confessed my sins and I got things right with the Lord. And, and what I did was <laughs> I plugged in to that power that only he could provide. 
And now, as I look at the world, and definitely through the lens of the scriptures, I see that while things are not right in the world, they are right according to the word of God, and things are right on track as to how they're going to be. And so, I would challenge you to contemplate these things. I, I think that we kind of live in a world today where people don't do that so much. And the more you contemplate, the more amazing you're going to find our God is. Now, think about this, and I'll leave you with this. Um, how can we even think? Where do our thoughts come from? Is it gray matter? Is it just the synaptic gap? Where do these thoughts come from? I think it's something that we really, really need to contemplate. The verse is John 5, 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but pass from death unto life. In John 17, 3, it says, and this is life eternal to know thee, the one true God in Jesus Christ. I hope you know him. And I hope when you look around and you see that things aren't right, you can uh, realize you can have a relationship with the one that's made it all right. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow.